Welcome back. The Imo State governorship election is generating attention as the D-Day draws nearer. Incumbent Hope Uzodema's ambition to retain his seat is being challenged by the People's Democratic Party and the Labour Party. Now, while the election comes with the typical electoral intricacies, how Uzodema emerged as governor nearly four years ago makes it even more interesting. The November 11 election is delicately poised, and today on Politics HQ, we will look at the issues highly considered and widely discussed as far as that election is concerned. We have joining us on Politics HQ, Kajetan Duke. He is a spokesperson for the All Progressives Congress in Imo State. We have uh, Barista Hejirika Emeka, who is a legal advisor and uh, of the Labour Party in Imo State and spokesman for the Eighth Anachono campaign organization. And later on, we hope to be joined by Mazi Kenanoha, who is a special advisor on media to the PDP governorship candidate in Imo State, Senator Samuel Ayanwo. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time and good evening to you. Thank you. Let's start off with um, uh, uh, Mr. Hejirika, um, legal advisor of the Labour Party in Imo State. Uh, Mr. Hejirika, the, the presidential candidate of your party, uh, Labour Party, uh, that was in the February 25 presidential election. Peter B was in Imo State recently, and he said that his party, your party, Labour Party, will win the November 11 governorship election in Imo State. Now, what makes you, those of you in the Labour Party, so confident that you will win the governorship election come November? Uh, thank you very much. I, I, I hope you can hear me. Loud and clear. Okay, first of all, the Labour Party, as uh, it is so structured in Imo State now, is the party to beat. We have 27 local governments here. By the time the elections are called on the 11th of November, we are sure of getting more than two thirds. Reason being that Imo people are are seriously tired of the misrule currently going on. The mismanagement of the security situation in Imo State by the present government, APC government, the economic downturn. Let me give you an, an example. I've stayed in Owere long enough. Owere used to be like the Las Vegas of Nigeria. You know, everybody, even the people in Lagos, they will fly in here to come and enjoy themselves. But uh, you see, because of the insecurity and the mismanagement of the insecurity, because one is, insecurity is everywhere. But different governors also manage it. There was insecurity when the past governor, Ihedioha, was here. He managed it very well. So, you see, the mismanagement of the insecurity, the mismanagement of the resources, the lack of development, go to all the internal roads, intrastate roads, all of them are spoiled. The government is only concentrating on the roads where they can get refund from the federal government. That is the federal roads. So when you look at all these things, you now ask yourself, what is this gov governor even coming out for? To co what is he coming out? Why is, he, why is he even coming out to ask Imo people to vote for him? Because definitely most Imo people will not vote for him. It's, it's quite obvious. And the Labour Party they, is so structured is so structured. Labour Party is, is like a different party. All over the country, Labour Party is like a different party altogether. Because what, what is going on in Abia State now? It's not like what everybody is used to. The governor has hit the ground running, you know. And that is how it is with all the Labour Party candidates. Once they are there, they hit the ground running because of the philosophy behind the party. In Imo State today, we have about 4,725 4, polling units or thereabout. Go to each and every unit, you will see a Labour Party sympathizer. You will see at least 10 Labour Party sympathizers. Now, bring out your calculator and, and press 10 or 100 per polling unit. You will know what I'm talking about. So this is not jokes. And this will not be an ordinary election. That is why the government, the APC, they are scared. And that is why you see uh, all these lies, all this propaganda, all this a whole lot against the Labour Party 
gubernatorial candidate, Senator Tan Achon, is going on. Because nobody throws a stone at a, a, a tree that has no fruit. Okay, okay. Uh, 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 Barista, uh, just hold the thought, please. Because I want to bring in uh, Kajit and Duke now uh, for, for his thoughts and response to the issues that you've raised. Uh, uh, Mr. Duke, what's your response? I mean, if we uh, go by what uh, uh, um, Ihe Jirika Emeka has said, um, Governor Hopu Zodima will be saying goodbye uh, to Douglas House, which was, or, or the People's House, as uh, Richard Zakorocha named it. Um, you know, uh, your governor will be saying goodbye to the People's House after November 2023. He's raised issues. He says, Imolites are tired of Uzodima's government. He says, uh, in particular, you know, the, uh, the mismanagement of insecurity, that Imo used to be known as the Las Vegas of Nigeria. People used to go from Lagos, Port Harcourt, uh, to go rest there. Um, let's not go into details. And of course, he's talking about Uzodima's mismanagement of um, resources. There are bad roads everywhere in Imo State. So he's asking, uh, what exactly is Uzodima coming out for? So, uh, Kajitan, can you answer that question? What is Uzodima coming out for if we have all these facts on the ground, according to uh, Ihe Jirika? Thank you, my brother. Um, it's my pleasure to, to be here this night with you. And um, my my brother who just spoke um, about uh, the purported that they are the to mismanagement of resources here in Nima. I don't know which part of Imo State he is talking from, or which part of Imo State he has been. He said he has been in Imo State for the past uh, 20 years. Now, but I don't know which part of Imo State. My brother, the strength of our campaign, the strength of our renewed hope campaign, is anchored on distinguishing the hope of the mass phenomenal transformation of Imo State within the last three and a half years in Imo. And I can tell you, my brother, what Uzadema has done in Imo in the last three and a half years is the strength of our campaign. And I can tell you that as I speak to you today, we don't have any political party in Imo State called Labour Party competent enough to constitute a threat to the second term deed of His Excellency Distinguished Senator Uzadema. My brother, the truth of the matter is, Two hours program is not enough for me to elucidate on the phenomenal performance of this man called Senator Hopus Adema. Let me tell you, <clears throat> when Senator Hopus Adema came on board in 2020, we met Imo State in a state of infrastructural decay. Everywhere was infrastructurally comatose when we came on board. And because Governor Hopu Zodima has promised Imolites during the campaign. He has promised Imolites rehabilitation, reconstruction, and recovery of critical infrastructure here in Imo State. He made infrastructural development a priority of his administration. But as I speak to you today, this administration has recovered, rehabilitated, and reconstructed over 150 roads scattered all over the state. And my brother here is aware. You see, it is. Nobody is accusing the governor of not building roads. What they are not saying is that he is building federal roads. And I want to tell you that for us to recover the economic prosperity of the state, we need to look at the, those critical roads that are the economic arteries of economic activities in the state. This government of Governor Puzadema. Okay, uh, 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 Mr. Kajetan, I'll come back to you shortly, but um, you've, you've been able to answer the question that was asked by uh, uh, Barista Hejirika uh, earlier, where he he asked, you know, um, what exactly is Hopu Zodima coming out for uh, in this election? And you are saying that uh, Governor Hopu Zodima's campaign is anchored on his phenomenal performance. Um, can, can you break down the phenomenal performance? Give us one or two examples of the phenomenon uh, or the phenomenal performance of uh, Governor Hopu Zodima. more than 150 roads scattered in the, in the entire state. And I can name them, if you permit me. We have done the Oro Road, Road. It's over 58 kilometer road, fully dualized with solar powered street light. Yeah, Kajitan, are you there, please? 
doing the, we are still doing the over Omaha road. We have done the Mbidu Uguta Lake Road. We have done the Nkume Omawa Road. Olu. We have done the Ahara Junction, Aba Branch Road. And there are so many other roads. You know, where the municipality, they want a capital territory. The governor puts on them urban renewal projects. Okay, 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 yeah. Kajatan, stay, stay, hold the thought for a second. I want to go quickly to uh, uh, Rebecca Hejirka. Uh, uh, so, what does the Labour Party, and, and I'd like to also point out that we gave an invitation to um, Mazi Ikena Onoha. Uh, Dr. Onoha is a special advisor to uh, Samayao, who is a PDP governorship candidate in Imo State. Unfortunately, he has not been able to join us, so we just want to put that out there for fairness and balance. But uh, back to you, uh, Mecca Hejirka. What exactly does Labour Party plan to do differently in Imo State? Uh, you've heard Kajetan answer your question, because it's not just enough to point okay, out. Okay, first of all. Yes, go on. Okay, uh, <clears throat> first of all, Kajetan, Kajetan, we are from the same local government, Ngopala. Ask Kajetan what roads his principal has done in Ngopala. Almost 90% of the roads in Ngopala are, 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 have been have washed off. Now he's talking of uh, Ayala Junction to Aba Branch. Ayala Junction to Aba Branch is one of the worst roads in Nigeria. It connects two, lo two, uh, two local governments. Ahara Junction to Olu Road, the road he's mentioned that they've built. You see, you have a correspondent in Oweri. Please tell your correspondent in Oweri to go from Ahara Junction to Aba Branch to see that road. That road is a death trap. So it has what, never been what, touched. What, what will the Labour Party, because it's not enough to... No, to, what the Labour Party wants to do differently yeah. is that, first of all, in the area of roads, we, just like um, uh, the Abia State Governor, OT, of Labour Party Extraction is doing now, we are going to take the roads in batches in order of priority. We are, it is not rocket science to repair roads. Even, even, even the, in, even the, uh, the infra city roads, no, you know, the street roads, you know, where they are all spoiled. So it is not rocket science to build these things. It is just to get the funds mapped out. When you get the funds mapped out, when there's a will to do them, we are going to make sure that some of these roads are fixed because it's not rocket science. Okay, you so I, are, you, are you saying the, that the Labour Party's candidate doesn't have uh, uh, um, any novel idea, apart from the thing that isn't rocket science, is there no innovation? No, 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 no. It's not, a, it's not a matter of. I wonder what you mean by novel idea. Novel idea is aimed at serving the people. The people we are serving are the taxpayers, are the people of Imo State. So ap apart from roads, so what else? What else does Labour Party have in store? Because it seems yeah, it seems your your, your manifesto is just about me. pointing at what uh, Hope Zodima and APC haven't done. Yeah, so, that's exactly what I'm. That's exactly what I'm trying to tell you. He started with roads. What they've done. What what he's claiming. What they've not done. And I'm trying to tell you what we are going to do differently in that regard. And then ask him how many hospitals they've equipped. What we plan. What we plan is to make sure that medical tourism is enthroned in Imo State. How are we going to do that? There are about 27 buildings. There are about 27 buildings scattered all over Imo State. What is remaining is to equip these roads. They equip these uh, hospitals. Okay. Bring in the doctors, bring in the nurses. So bring you're, in the you're talking about healthcare. Spray. Gentlemen, before you go, a final question to, uh, to both of you. Please make your answer very brief. Imo State, is Imo State secure enough to hold an election in three months' time? Yesterday we heard from the Nigerian army that they fought an attack by IPOB fighters on the forward operating base, the military base in Imo State. So is the state ready for such an election? I'll very briefly, I'll go to Kajitan, then I'll come to you, uh, Barista Hejerka. Kajitan. Well, Barbara, thank you. Um, like, like, like I said before, um, this, the, the time allocated for this program is not enough for us to elucidate on what is going on in Imo State and what the government has been able to achieve within the past three and a half years. And the truth of the matter is that the election we hold in Imo, uh, we have been doing our campaigns, um, a few days ago, uh, the Labour Party had a, a show of shame in Imo. 
of uh, what they call uh, gubernatorial, uh, kick off of the gubernatorial campaign election. As I speak to you today, Ebola do not know who is even on the on the ballot for for Labour Party, but that's a, that's a matter for another day. The truth of the matter is that Imo is safe, and we are going to do election. Election will hold in Imo on November 11. And I want to tell you, I want to tell you on this platform that our people are to mobilize. Our people are together. Our people have come together to say we will re-elect the governor, Governor Pusajema, for what he have done in Imo. Have, okay. In spite of all the all right, all right. Th thank you, Kajetan. Uh, thank you, Kajetan. Uh, uh, here, Jeremy Maker, what's your take on, on on prospects of election with the insecurity recently witnessed in Imo? Even even the concerns of the Nigerian army, the Nigerian police, the Nigerian navy, their concerns about this security will tell you how this how this present APC government has mismanaged security. But like I said, what we, we we plan to do things differently, and there will be security because definitely we are going to find out the the ones we are going to engage to make sure that some of these things stop. We have a roadmap, like. I concur with him that the time your people are located here is not enough for me to put on the table what the Labour Party uh, uh, aims to do for the people of Imo State. But let me tell you the, something. The government is deliberately, the government is deliberately mis, that is uh, uh, mishandling uh, security in certain areas. Because even during the last election, there were areas where people did not vote, and votes oh, were written. Okay, okay, we, we have to go. I don't know if Kajetan agrees with you. I don't know if Kajetan agrees with you, uh, but we quickly will have to go. Um, so, Kajetan, are you there? Imo uh, yeah, yeah, citizens are not disenfranchised. It is our, it is our response. It is, it is our expectation. It is our expectation that uh, the Labour Party candidate will will come and test his popularity amongst the Imo electorate. Okay, okay, G we, gentlemen, we, we, we expect that he tests his popularity if actually gentlemen, becomes, we have to go. He becomes the candidate of the party. But then, even can okay, G G Kajetan uh, um, Duke is the. Spokesperson for the APC in Imo State, uh, Ehejirika Emeka Ehejirika is a legal advisor to the Labour Party in Imo State. And of course, uh, we'll have both of you and more, much more coverage of the um, Imo State governorship elections. Thank you very much uh, for your time, gentlemen. And it's time for me to give you something to chew on. Stay with us. the Nigerian government must ensure that local governments are autonomous. Currently under the ambit of state governments, ampits, I meant ampits if you didn't hear me well, of state governments, yes, there's very little that Nigerians enjoy from their local governments. Local governments see the people better and know their pain points better than any level of governments. We're telling you to ditch the greed and do what will make the nation better. Ladies and gentlemen, something for you to chew on. And that's the size of a package tonight on Politics HQ. My name is Kofi Bartels. Hope you enjoyed the show. Good night. <music>